Members, good morning. This is a public hearing. And we're here to receive views on Hong Shui Q NDA planning and engineering study. We have a quorum, so I call this meeting to order. We have 22 deputations and seven individuals attending this hearing today. I will allow deputations to speak first. Each deputation or individual will have a speaking time limit of four minutes. After they've spoken, I will first invite members to ask questions or give comments, and then ask the administration to give their brief responses. Do members agree with the arrangement? No objection. So I will uh, ask the staff to invite the administration and deputations in. So may I first welcome the administration, deputation and individuals attending this meeting. The name list and the attendance list is uh, in front of you, so I won't go through them. So I'll ask the deputations to speak first. Each deputation and represented um, and each individual will have a speaking time limit of four minutes, and all the submissions and speaking notes and um, speeches will not be protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance Cap three eight two. So. Um, I'll first invite the uh, deputation, Green Sense. Good morning, I represent Green Sense. I hope members of this council and the administration will take a minute to read our uh, color printed uh, proposal. Now, on the proposal in relation to Hong Shui QNDA, uh, we'd like to suggest that the Population be scaled back from 170,000 to 120,000. The administration should not provide housing uh, simply for the purpose of uh, meeting the, the uh, targets quantitatively. The quality of uh, living should also be enhanced with. Um, Dense population, you need a more infrastructure uh, like transport, and uh, we suggest that the private public housing mix be adjusted so that we have more public housing according to the actual uh, uh, according to the um, according to the um, OZP. Uh, there is a, right now only a ratio for private to public housing. That means. There is no specific target uh, on the part of the administration. We need to know the HOS ratio as well. So uh, we'd like to suggest an increase in the ratio uh, for HOS, and the private housing should be reduced to avoid too many luxury homes causing a wastage of uh, land. And the four non-indigenous villages should be retained 
because it is very unfair. In the Hong Shou Kill NDA planning or the NENT NDA, very often the non indigenous villages are sacrificed. Their request is um, no clearance, no demolition. Not only are their requests not met, the administration cannot protect farming activities. We don't see a long term agricultural policy. We don't understand why, in the NDAs, the administration instead of keeping these non indigenous villages um, is uh, looking for lands to resettle them and uh, to have rehabilitative farming. The four non indigenous villages only accounts for 5.4 percent of the total uh, farmland. This is just a small proportion. The administration should keep these four villages. And one of the villages, San San Sun Village, has um, a uh, um, area with high ecological value. That for uh, is an egret tree, and uh, for the uh, ecologically sensitive areas, even the slightest development would cause a significant impact on it. We also suggest recycling yards be provided to support the recycling industry, and there should also be land for logistics facilities to support the economy so that the activities can congregate at one area to reduce impact on the environment. Thank you. Sorry, the speaker is not coming through. Mr. Ho. Well, the planning department suggests that this, um, the West Rail will be used as the uh, backbone of transportation. So along the, the West Rail line, that is, Tin Shui Wai will become the uh, Center for public uh, housing and HOS housing, and we don't understand why near the terminus we have valuable land resources, and yet a town park will be built. The build the 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 town park will comprise an area even larger than our village villages, and. Apart from helping developers in having their land um, land value go up, in relation to the effectiveness in um, conveying commuters, uh, it's in the negative. Uh, the new pop the new area will accommodate the population of one hundred twenty five thousand. Um, and there is a part, part labor force participation rate in Tun Mun Yunlong of 60.6 percent. In 2011, Yunlong um, and Tun Mun has a population of 1.07 million, and uh, only 84,000 uh, jobs were available within the district. So the, the percentage was only 7.85 percent, with uh, uh, 100 and 75,000 uh, population in the area. Uh, only a small proportion will need to uh, will uh, have the opportunity to work within the district, whereas for the, uh, the majority, they need to work across the district. Will can the uh, infrastructure support um, uh, the uh, additional eighty thousand? Population and now the saturation rate is uh, set at uh, 67 percent, and it's and now um, the uh, per the uh, passenger per hour uh, rate is set at 25,000. 
for the remaining 61,000. They are unable to uh, rely on West Rail to travel across the district to work. And uh, we uh, we doubt that the 2% uh, proposed by the government is not correct. It's actually 5.1%, which is equivalent to some 3,800 persons. The capacity of West Rail is 75,000. So um, by calculation, it's uh, 3,800 or so uh, passengers with a percentage of 5.1, which is uh, more than the capacity of um, the uh, of a train, so Hongshou Kill will not cause uh, any increase in the uh, efficiency of use of West Rail, so it is not reasonable. We should uh, further develop at the Tinshe Wai Station instead to avoid uh, unnecessary controversies on the subject. Earlier, our group has uh, written to the planning department to ask it to explain how come they have come up with a figure of a, of a jobs of 100,000 uh, job opportunities, but their explanation seems unreasonable. And that is uh, calculated based on the Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines. The government has worked with the uh, TWGH and uh, and built a Tin Sao Bazaar in Tin Shui Wai. And then the project has not been successful. Nine out of ten of the stores have not been taken up. So I don't think a 100,000 jobs can be created in reality. The next one. Next one is Mr. Kong, Alliance for Promoting Tin Shui Wai Economy. Uh, in the past, because of the lack of jobs in Tin Shui Wai and because of mistakes in planning, a lot of the um, people in Tin Shui Wai have suffered a lot since 1993 in the past two decades. So there will be an extension of the Tin, uh, Hong Shui Q, um near the southern part of Tin Shui Wai. And Tin Shui residents are very hopeful that new opportunities will be coming along. But then when we look at the um, preliminary outline development plan, we find that there is a big problem. First, uh, near the northern part of the Hong Shui Q, near the Tin Shui Wai, it will be adopting the conventional model. There will be a large area uh, earmarked for building uh, housing estates. The government has used uh, this model to develop Tin Shui Wai. Then there will be a lack of streets, and there, there will be a lack of street life. And the number of jobs have been cut, and small um, shops can't uh, survive, and uh, um, local economic activities can't survive either. Now, Tin Shui Wai has a population of 300,000 only. So is it uh, suitable or appropriate for more uh, public housing estates to be built there? Now, for Hong Shui Q, the commercial activities will be clustered around the southern part near the Hong Shui Q station. Tin Shui Wai residents and those living in northern Hong Shui Q, will they be able to travel to the south uh, to work there or use the commercial facilities there? or? Is it true that the government is using the riverside areas in the northern area for enjoyment by the uh, rich people, and the government is not uh, doesn't have the doesn't plan to uh, resolve problems for the low income groups, housing problems for the low income groups? Now, in the PODP, a small part of um, will be used for agricultural purposes. For Tin Shui residents, we wonder whether this part can be expanded. Um, some Tin Shui residents can actually join business activities and join labor-intensive um, industries, economic activities. And in DC H three, there are industries. Can we add in some environmental industries there? 
the population plan for Hongshiku is 210,000. We wonder whether that number can be reduced because that will have an impact on uh, community facilities and job opportunities. Now, altogether, Tunshou Wai and Hongshiku will have a population of 700,000. And people may compete for jobs. There may be a problem. Has the administration considered that? Uh, we are overall happy about uh, development in Hongshui Q, but in the process, we hope that everyone is treated equally, including the indigenous and in non indigenous villages. Now, four non indigenous villages are going to disappear from the development plan. So, can the administration um, consider retaining the non indigenous villages um, as they, what they're doing for the indigenous villages? Can the consultant um, consider that? We hope that the non indigenous and indigenous villages can be treated equally. Next one, Mr. Chang, Ch Lok Ma Chow, China Hong Kong Freight Association. Thank you, Chairman. This is a mega development project in Hong Shui Q. We read the consultant's report, but it seems to be deliberating, uh, deliberately playing down the impact on the logistics industry. The number of lo uh, area of for logistics industry will be cut from 192 hectares to 62 hectares. One third will be retained. Now, um, the report mentions that that will be multi-story logistics building. We have reservations on this idea. According to information on hand, the proposed, or rather, well, a uh, the. Um, cargo stacking area takes up a hundred hectares already and these can't be are relocated to the um, logistics center and there are also um, storage yards for prefabricated um, structures and also um, waste paper recycling yards and all these can't be accommodated within the logistics uh, quarter the um, Consultant has also neglected one point. Now, over 50,000 containers are being stored in the um, cargo yard now, and they are handling five, that, five, 500 cargoes per day, uh, taking up 20% of all uh, cargoes handled in the area. Now, um, the handling or processing time now it has a, re a triggered dissatisfaction among the freight uh, operators. Now, the time has been expended from 50 minutes to 60 minutes uh, to three hours. So we find this unacceptable. We don't want the interest of the logistics industry be sacrificed in this development plan, and thousands of. Uh, uh, people in the in in the trade will be affected as far when it comes to their livelihood. We hope that the administration can make um, suitable arrangements to find a replacement sites and to help us to relocate um, to suitable sites. Uh, we don't want to be the only loser in the entire development plan, and that would not be a successful plan either. We believe that the Development Bureau can make the best arrangements for relocation, and most of the operators actually don't welcome this plan. Most of the operators would like to deal with the private landowners because we, th we think that the administration um, is not sympathetic towards the trade, and uh, we are asked uh, to return there every five to six years. The Development Bureau should contain or well, should consider granting us a longer term lease. If we are going to attend, uh, say, once every three to five years, then that will create a lot of difficulties. Now, also, the administration, in the name of fairness, will um, um, conduct open tender exercise. Well, in Kwai Ching, for example, the every 
every container park uh, uh, car park it costs around three thousand to five thousand dollars, but in Laofanshan it, it is only two thousand dollars. In um, Kuaiting, the short lease uh, tender, the cost is around four thousand dollars. But now in our surrounding areas like Chekao, the monthly uh, car, uh, rent is. Only seven that seven hundred renminbi, and in Singapore it's only two hundred fifty Singapore dollars. So you can tell uh, how high the costs we are facing in Hong Kong. The next one, Dr. Kenneth Chen from the Hong Kong Institute of Planners. We support the proposal in principle. This is a very good solution to satisfy future housing needs. We know that there are four guiding principles in the proposal, and we have uh, certain suggestions on these principles so that uh, the, the objectives can be achieved more easily. First is on the industrial demand and employment opportunities. The paper mentions that 72 hectares of land will be reserved to create uh, 100,000 job opportunities. We don't think this approach is good. If we want to achieve this goal, we must draw up good strategies and to introduce incentives to attract investors to create opportunities. It's not good enough to, that uh, just a certain uh, area of land be reserved. Now, uh, we have some comments on the PB, PBU and the OS activities, but the paper mentions little about the impact on the existing operators and whether we have any special arrangements to help them um, survive. So there is little mentioned in the paper in this aspect. Uh, we have comments on transport as well. Um, the West Rail will be used as the backbone for the development, we understand from the paper, but we think the administration should consider one point. A lot of the residents will be living in areas far away from the railway stations. The administration should consider providing sufficient feeder services, especially in the northern part of the NTA. That should be a uh, priority. The government has also made suggestions about creation of green living and working environment. We support a low carbon policy. But in order to achieve this, we have to consider providing sufficient incentives to um, different stakeholders um, to encourage them to do this. The paper also is rather silent on the impact on agricultural activities. Can we consider creating a green urban fringe so that um, farming activities can continue? Actually, in urban areas, there are a lot of such activities already. As for conservation, we support the document's proposal that different conservation sites should be um, pulled together. As regards implementation mechanism, we know that we don't have to um, go into much detail at this stage on the mechanism. But based on past experience, we think the government should consider whether we should still adopt the CNTA or conventional new town approach. We believe that the government should think about more effective approaches. Lastly, public engagement. We think that it's good that the government engages the public, but it, the, then these uh, PE exercises have become 
to routine these days. Can the government use more? Can be more innovative to canvas more views from the public, so that the there is more public support、uh, for the proposal. Next, Mr. Ng from Hong Kong Chain Merchants Association. Good morning. I represent Hong Kong Chain Merchants Association. Now we are situated at the blue area,、um, the、uh, for the hospital development. Well,、uh, we have、um, a number of factories.、Uh, we'd like to, the、uh, development to go smooth. To and I am going to、uh, say something about、uh, the area concerned. Now,、um, our family started in the fifties、uh, in the area and.、Uh, We the three generations、uh, spent fifty, sixty years、uh, overseeing the changes in the area, and uh, we uh, manufactured uh,、um, drain covers, and、uh, and then in the eighties、uh, we uh, manufactured uh, slippers, and we also、uh, with more infrastructure, and、uh, there were processing trade inside, and there is a history of forty years. As far as、uh, manufacturing industries is co-、uh, is concerned in the area, and uh, for the uh, polishing of、uh, marble, etc., we still have、um, this kind of、um, activities in the area, and also、um, motor uh, 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 lubricants, etc., and、uh, also. Some backup facilities for、uh, construction projects for the government departments like、uh, DST or、uh, ASD, etc. We provide support against this backdrop. The government has designated our area as Industrial D.、Um, we need open space to carry out uh, these um, processes. We cannot be、uh, relocated in、uh, industrial buildings. Our situation is not like、um, residents. Our、uh, the nature of our industries is different from others. We are holders of、uh, some industrial licenses, and we have no alternatives because we cannot be relocated in these way these、uh, policies, and we don't have any channel to. Uh, find an, another site for these activities. So our association、uh, is of the view that we'd like to reinstate our businesses, and we hope the government could help us reprovision our f- plants and、uh, find suitable locations and、uh, issue more licenses. We are in the heavy industrial sector. I hope the government could protect the sector. Next, Mr. Lau from the Hong Kong Institute of Surveyors. Thank you, Chairman. In principle, our institute is in support of the development plan. On the future um, need um, demand for logistics, and also and demand assessment and development parameters, we like to express our concern. First of all, we'd like the administration to. Elaborate on the demand assessment of logistics area. We understand that 62 hectares of land has been reserved for log- logistics use in the NDA, but we don't see how the government conduct the assessment for future demand and how the land could meet the future demand with the current proposed plot ratio. Are the sites sufficient to accommodate the hundred,、um, the existing port up, backup and open storage areas, which span 190 hectares? And will there be any spe- spare capacity for growth? Now, on the blueprint or the vision、uh, for the development of the logistics sector. We need for th- further elab- elaboration after the completion of the Tumun Chalap Cock Link. The government should consider how、uh, to meet the challenges with the uh, uh, geographic lo- geographic location of the sites, and also development parameters. We note that for 
ordinary logistics facilities usually the buildings will be developed with high headroom of 5 to 6.5 meters which are far taller than the headroom of 3 to 3.5 meters for typical residential or office buildings with the current proposed plot ratio for logistics buildings there we anticipate that these buildings will be massive which will likely block the proposed view corridor so I hope the administration could uh, spend more time to explain to the public how to strike a balance between uh, the view corridor and the plot ratio and the population in density should be increased now the planned population is uh, 218 divide that by 862 hectares the current average density is 264 people per hectare. But after reducing the area for green belt and village type development, the average density will increase to 370 people per hectare. And um, the density is still lower than the uh, assumption added, estimated by the government, which is 400 people per hectare. That is uh, there is room to increase the population density and on commercial development we'd like the administration to elaborate uh, on the details especially on how the commercial area can um, tie in with the uh, development in Qianhai uh, and only suitable planning can uh, and a critical mass can allow the commercial zone to have a suitable uh, to have competitiveness, and for undetermined zone, I mean some areas should be retained as undetermined zone to provide a buffer for future changes. Thank you. Next, Conservancy Association, Mr. Ng. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to talk about agriculture. Agriculture or farming activities still exist in Hong Shui Kiu. There are farmlands of different sizes in Hong Shui Kiu at present. In the development plan, agriculture is missing. It should be put back in the plan. And secondly, farmers should be able to have the option of continuing with the farm activities or to be relocated. Well, to my understanding and according to my observation, for larger farmlands, they are currently situated in Sangsheng village or Tinsam village. Some are, um, and there are irrigation channels and farmlands. The situation is actually quite good. But now the farmland uh, has been rezoned for residential purposes. In the PODP, it was suggested that the uh, eagle tree will be retained. But it's but uh, you can see from the plan that in the future the uh, area will be surrounded by um, housing development. We oppose. The broad brush rezoning of farmlands near Sunshine Village or Tinsam Village for residential purpose. There should be uh, sites reserved for uh, farmers to practice farming there. And when we met with the planning department, they said that a 10 hectare farmland near the southwest part of the area will be used for rehabilitative farming. I don't know whether they have sent a representative to check that site. Several years ago, people started uh, uh, dumping uh, mud there, and it, even if rehabilitative farming is uh, to be carried out there, it's impossible for farmers to reinstate the land and pay for the cost for farming. 
and I don't know whether the administration has learned a lesson from the NENT NDAs. It's up to private owners which whether they would uh, lease the land for uh, lease out the land for rehabilitative farming. The government could not help these farmers in finding land uh, for farming. I don't know when the administration will give us a clear account. So please give us more information. Finally, I'd like to talk about um, leisure farming. Our understanding is that uh, for the leisure farm land plan uh, in the plan, these are quality um, areas. If the land is covered in concrete uh, for the purpose of uh, building a park there. Alternative forms of open space should be provided, for example, community farming, so that farmers could practice farming there. And the experience of uh, farmers could be used in um, teaching the community to practice farming. This will be um, a better use of land resources apart from the town park. Mr. Yao from Yunlong Heidong. Thank you. Good morning. The Kongshui Q NDA is a good opportunity to improve Hong Kong people's livelihood and the quality of living. We support the plan and on um, employment, transportation and housing. We have uh, the, the following views to make. First, on housing, the ratio is 51 to 49. On the face of it, um, it's not uh, adequate. The government should pay attention to the distribution of public and private housing mix to have a more balanced um, population distribution and development of community. Ten years ago, when the government developed the northern part of Tin Shui Wai and Tong Chong, um, there was uh, the, the um, Populate the public housing um, areas were too dense, and uh, some private residential sites should be reserved for implementing the Hong Kong land for Hong Kong people policy. And we'd like to know from the government whether such land will be reserved and what is the proportion. And we also think that the uh, development should be self-sustained. In Tin Shui Wai, there were problems. It, the area was too remote and transportation costs were too high. And in the paper, the administration says that uh, 100,000 jobs can be provided in the NDA. We think that detailed planning is necessary, and consideration must be given to um, residents working within the district. Mismatch should be avoided in the proposal. We don't see the uh, breakdown of these uh, jobs. I hope the administration could. Have could uh, elaborate on it. Apart from the so-called high-tech uh, economy, uh, I th think um, sufficient land should also be reserved for other purposes like tourism, uh, leisure farming, and also land should be uh, reserved to cater for the interests of stakeholders in the logistics industry and there should be wet markets with small shops so that uh, people can be given more choices in their shopping on transportation Yunlong, Tun Shui Wai and uh, those living in the rural area have exceeded 600,000 and apart from Tin Shui uh, uh, Hong Shui Kiu uh, the south of Yunlong will also be Developed and with um, empty with a uh, rest well superstructure projects, the uh, fo population forecast will be uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand, and it will go beyond the capacity of West Well. And so-called riverside neighborhood or riverine neighborhood, 
the uh, local residents would go to Tin Shui Wai South Station. Now during peak hours, the the uh, station is already jam packed, so it cannot uh, accommodate There's such a huge crowd of commuters. So connectivity should be enhanced. Apart from uh, another station, there should be another link uh, going from Tun Mun to Chun Wan to divert commuters uh, on uh, to West Rail di um, commuters. There will be a lot of development projects in Yunlong. We think that uh, we, the government should consider merging all these uh, projects, and the government should take uh, care of the interest of, of each and every stakeholder. Thank you. Tin Shum Shan Chun Concern Group, Mr. Leung. This is a good thing that Hong Kong be developed. We are part of Hong Kong and we should support the proposal. We think that the consultant is is making uh, all these um, bad suggestions in the consultant report, and everyone has been fooled in Hong Kong. If we pl proceed with the proposal, um, Hong Kong's harmony is going to be damaged. It is an unrealistic plan. Hong Kong's um, in respect of land resumption, uh, demolition of squatters, and compensation. The government has not been very clear on its policies, and its um, policies are arbitrary and not very clear, and it's not very humanitarian either. We are non indigenous villagers, we have a hard life. And you are discriminating against us. This is a, a most unfair policy. And um, the government's policy on PRH, it is not a good policy. People have to be registered in the 8485 uh, population census before they are qualified um, for resettlement in PRH. Now several decades ago we rented the piece of a piece of land and we reared uh, ch chickens and ducks and now we were not allowed to do that and we changed the structures into houses for people and because of uh, high living costs we rent out some rooms in our houses to other people. But you are imposing very stringent conditions on rehousing us. So how can we lend our support to this project? You have to take care of the interest of the non-indigenous villages. We are old people. We are not on CSSA. We are self-reliant. But then the threshold is so high and there should be a mean there would be a means test before we can move into PRH well the means test uh, conditions are too harsh even a street sleeper cannot uh, be eligible under a threshold so i think the government is retrogressing in its policies and we can't support it we are the victims of this proposal, and we're definitely not going to accept this proposal. We will fight till the very end to protect our homes. We hope that the administration should uh, retreat before it's too late. And don't accept the, all these mistaken uh, assumptions and statistics uh, provided by the consultant. Please listen to our views and understand and appreciate our sentiment. Uh, so that the harmony of the society can be maintained. 
Mr. Fu from a concern group on planning. We have been um, studying the proposal for some time. There is one point which has been seldom mentioned. This is another plan after the NENT of selling off Hong Kong. The West Rail and the Twin Moon Highway are already saturated and it's, um, and it's difficult to accommodate an extra 218,000 people in the new area. And in Tongchong and Tinshu Wai, oh, well, local people don't find work there. So how can you provide jobs to people in Tinshu Wai or um, Hong Shui Kyu? What is the purpose of the government of moving so many people into Hong Shui Kyu? The only purpose is to integrate Hong Kong and the mainland. Let's look at the location of Hong Shui Kyu. It's just just separated from the um, Shenzhen Bay um, uh, by Shenzhen. It means that there will be a lot of interaction between the two places. In Shanghai, there are a lot of um, economic activities going on, and the that will that will bring larger potential to. Uh, Hong Shui Kyu. In the 1999 study on the planning uh, of the planning department on Hong Shui Kyu, it already states states that uh, the Hong Shui Kyu will be developed a city to satisfy the increasing demand for Hong Kong mainland inter interchanges or exchanges. And the planning department official has said that um, the Hong Shui Kyu will be built into an area with good connections to the western part of Shenzhen. Now there is another. Um, group called the um, well on con concerned on mainland Hong Kong policies in 2011, um, it advocated building Hong Shui Kyu into a place like Shinjuku in Japan. And uh, Mr. Leung also said that uh, Hong Shui Kyu can be developed into the backyard of Shanghai, and people can work in Shanghai and then go back home in uh, Hong Shui Kyu. And other concern group also mentioned about um, l developing Hong Shui Kyu based on the living room of the city. There will be a connection bridge between Shanghai and. Hong Shui Q. Now, pro-establishment camps have been uh, raising points about integrating the mainland and Hong Kong. So it's obvious against this background that Hong Shui Q is meant for um, serving the purpose of integrating mainland and Hong Kong. Um, there has been adjustment in the positioning of Hong Shui Q. But then there is a seamless interface between the uh, special industry zone and Shanghai. And there will also be commercial facilities and hotels built Hong Shui Kyu. We wonder whether Hong Shui Kyu is really for Hong Kong people. Um, the many housing units will be built, so it is sad. But it seems that it is just a, um, a cover up for really um, the purpose of building Hong Shui Kyu for um, integration with the mainland. Next one. Hong Yi Kuk New Territories, Mr. Chen. Hong Yi Kuk supports in principle the Hong Shui Kyu NDA development plan, but we must note that while developing the area, the government should respect the interest of the villagers um, and avoid any social conflicts. I have uh, three points. First, in relocating the villages, the Hong Shui Kyu NDA will affect um, 20 indigenous villages and nine non-indigenous villages. Some of these villages have to be wiped out. So we would like to remind the administration that the relocation should take place in situ and then appropriate or reasonable compensation be dished out uh, to quell the dissatisfaction of the villages. Um, second, on compensation in land resumption, the Hong Yi Kok agrees that the compensation level should be on a par with that in the NENT and land for land under category C should be upgraded to category A so that the landowners can be compensated reasonably. Hong Yi Kuk also um, advocates the idea of land exchanges or exchanges of land titles. Third, the government should listen to the views of uh, people and the people are in the three villages Pingshan, Pingshan, Hashan, and Tunmun. And 
the administration, in addition to, li to listening to the district council, should also listen to the views of the rural uh, committees. They should um, um, give the uh, villagers' views a priority and um, to avoid uh, too strong opposition from the villagers. Now, some areas at present are used for logistics and storage purposes. A lot of the people in the trade are affected. The administration should make compensation and arrange for relocation of these industries. So we have three concrete suggestions. First, Harchin Rural Committee has three points to make. First, 80% of the land in that village will be affected and the people's uh, views in that village should be respected. The landowner's uh, interest should be safeguarded. Third, the impact on these villages should be carefully considered. Uh, there are several opinions from uh, comments from Ping Shan Hong. First, uh, land should be given to farmers for agricultural rehabilitation. Second, um, the green space and the open space is too large in space, and some of it should be uh, given back to the villagers for their own use. Third, the consultant has um, missed out Cha Kuang Wai and Tang Kui Chun. Fourth, um, objection to building a hospital near Yip Kui Chun. Fifth, the uh, storage facilities uh, will be phased out and people in the trade should be compensated and the activities relocated. Sixth, um, the administration should uh, be respect people's views regarding feng shui, drainage and so on. Seventh, villages object to the building of high rises near the ancestral hall. Now, next is the Chun Mun Rural Committee's opinions. The Yip Yun Chun will be wiped out, and they ask that the administration be um, arranging the compensation relocation to the villages, and people should be relocated in situ, and their treatment should be the same as that in Choi Yun Chun, and the um, compensation level should be upgraded from category B to category A. Thank you, Mr. Chengkin Cheng, next. I support um, the planning of Feng Shui Kyu in principle. If the government does a good job, then it will be able to satisfy the housing needs and then uh, bring uh, vitality to the development of NT West. Uh, I have two points to make. First is about transport and railways. I think the, the administration has neglected the development of railways in the uh, West NT. In Sha Tin, there is uh, 650,000 people, and including the Ma On Shine Line uh, and the University Station, uh, where it is serving a larger population. So every 200,000 people can enjoy one railway station. And for Tin Shui Wai, um, three. 100,000 people have one railway station. It goes to show that the government is uh, not doing a good job in planning for West Rail, uh, for railway in West NT. In the document, it says there will be a population of 218,000. But then there is only one railway station in the area. So I can foresee that. Um, the facilities will be stretched uh, to their limits. So I hope that the administration can consider the need for railway services in the area. In northern Hong Shui perhaps a spur line can be built um, reaching northern Tin Shui Wai so that people can enjoy the benefits of a massive railway system. In the long term, the government should consider um, building the Northern Link and the Chun Wan Chun Moon Link um, so that the railway development in the western part of NT can be upgraded as a whole. And I hope the administration can um, 
take note of the problem with uh, jobs within the district. Over the past uh, years, uh, regarding the uh, Northwest NT development, the administration tried to increase the labor force participation rate by providing more land. In the 2011 census, in NT West and Twin Moon, over 60 to 70 percent of the working population uh, have to w travel to other districts to work. This shows the lack of initiatives for the administration to provide jobs within the district to sustain the population there. So the government should consider when developing Hong Shui Q, how jobs can be provided within the district for local residents. There is huge potential. It's very close to the airport with a vast piece of land in the new anti west. It's very suitable uh, for um, the construction of a logistics space and to provide backup for the airport. I hope the administration could do a better job to reach a target of 100,000 um, working population in the area. I understand very often the government will say that uh, housing is in short supply, we need more housing, but at the same time jobs should be provided. Thank you. Next, Mr. Long Chi Ming. Thank you, Chairman. On Hong Shui Q NDA, I have the following views. The Hong Shui Q NDA is uh, placing a focus on residential areas, but more commercial sites or more jobs should be provided to avoid a repetition of the Tin Shui Wai situation. We see a lot of problems. For example, people having to travel uh, to work in other districts. And uh, again, the focus is on residential developments uh, that are inadequate commercial sites, etc. Uh, people need to work outside of the district, and the government is neglecting the rights of residents in NT West. So more jobs should be provided so that the population within the district could work without uh, having the need to travel uh, and uh, spend uh, much on transportation to travel across districts. And that we should also avoid the repetition of the VCT in Tun Mun. The development should carry the unique characteristics of the area. And Hong Shui Kyu is a new development area. The administration should think out of the box. As far as development is concerned, it should not be commercial based. Um, the focus should be on um, the uh, local area. And I also agree with the plan that there should be green facilities uh, like a cycling track to reduce carbon emission. And uh, it can also be a new green area. And in Hong Shui Kyu NDA, the planned population is uh, some 200,000. And there is only one station. There should be different uh, approaches to resolving this problem. We see in various new towns like Kwai Ching, according to the 2011 census, they have four stations for a population of uh, over 500,000. And yet for Hong Shui Kyu, the population is over 200,000. And there is only one station. It's not fair. On transportation, Hong Shui Kyu is far away from urban areas. It's very con inconvenient for local residents, so uh, it will also pose a great pressure on the transportation network. As some two hundred thousand population will need to share one station, there will be traffic problems, and non-indigenous villages will be um, annihilated. In fact. The administration should not only target non-indigenous villages. Planning should be done um, in line with uh, various demands, and the non-indigenous villages should not be neglected. The government should also uh, heed the views of non-indigenous villages 
the government should uh, offer extra share arrangements, uh, just like in the Choi Yun uh, Chun incident, uh, or help them um, with um, PRH three housing. Thank you. Next, Mr. Wang from Hong Kong Professionals and Senior Executive Association. Thank you, Chairman. The, our association is of the view that there is a, an urgent need to develop a new uh, development area, so Hong Shui Q NDA should be expedited as soon as possible to increase land for uh, various purposes, and in particular, the uh, speed of redevelopment and new development should be expedited. We think that the development area should carry local characteristics. The government should work with um, different departments should to enhance um, the the uh, or to meet the demands and to uh, cater for the needs of various sectors like uh, retail industry and logistics, etc. And uh, supporting facilities should also be provided to create jobs for um, shop operators affected in the areas. Resettlement or compensation should be provided so as to minimize the impact on the staff of the small shop operators. We support the retention or conservation of um, the green area in the and um, jobs should be provided uh, to and prom tourism should be promoted and uh, we support the NDA's proposal in developing Hong Shui Q into a core business or sub core the business district so that eventually the uh, government offices in core central business districts can be relocated and um, the government can also take the lead and encourage enterprises to be relocated in the sub core uh, sub core uh, business districts. So the um, the plot ratio should be properly planned to optimize the use of sites, and there should be proper planning for facilities like wet markets and storage, and other facilities should also be. Uh, plan properly, in transportation network and other infrastructure should be provided as soon as possible to attract investors and expedite the development. On the recent development plans, the, despite the long consultation periods, the uh, plan remains con con controversial in the community, like the NENT development. The association thinks that the mode of uh, consultation and the stakeholders involved in the scope of consultation should be considered to in order to minimize the uh, um, gap um, in the community and uh, we should make uh, we should grasp the opportunities to ensure stable development of Hong Kong's economy next Ms. Fong Yuk Leng. I am a Tin Shui Wai resident. I'd like to say something here. Hong Shui Q N D A. We have hopes because I've been living in Tin Shui Wai for over two decades. I um, moved in in 1992. As a Tin Shui Wai resident, I have this feeling that we have a huge uh, population, 300,000. We have large housing estates. But over the past two or three decades, I feel like a victim. I feel like an aggrieved subject because it's a dead city. There is no vibrancy at all. We have no job opportunities. That That is why there are no supporting measures. It's only for um, residential developments. And um, many deputations have talked about uh, the population having to work outside of the district. And I have this hope for Hong Shui Q NDA. I hope the administration can consider providing more job opportunities within the district to support the economic and the industrial development within the area so that local residents can 
make a living and uh, work within the district, so that residents don't need to um, cr travel across districts to work, so that we can have work-life balance. And I'd like to suggest to the administration that. As far as Hong Shui Q is concerned, you should not copy from the Tin Shui Wai development model, or else you will create another dead city. For Tin Shui Wai South, there is only one shopping mall amount, several large public housing estates. There are no uh, shop fronts in the streets. In Hong Shui Q NDA, I hope. That considerations can be given to various fronts, for example, we can uh, follow the model in Kowloon, in Hong Kong, in urban areas, so that we have more shops in the streets for uh, restaurants and other businesses. It should not be dominated by shopping malls. Local residents want job opportunities and uh, no frills, uh, living style, lifestyle. We don't want luxurious shopping malls. We don't want luxury brands, shops. These are not local residents' need. These are not necessities in our daily living. These are luxurious items. These are luxury. Uh, stuff and uh, for Tun Moon and even shopping malls near our housing estates, shops have become uh, higher end. Uh, they sell high end products and up market products. We don't need those. I hope the government could optimize the use of land in Hong Shui Q NDA and optimize the use of space in the street so that we have more small shops so that small retailers can do business there. Sometimes in uh, older districts, uh, we see heavy pedestrian flow, whereas in Tin Shui Wai, it's like a dead city. Nobody walks in Tin Shui Wai. Street shops can help connecting um, residents and uh, keep the community vibrant. I hope the com uh, the government can consider it and so that we can have more job job opportunities within the districts to make a living. Thank you. Next, Ms. Vivian Shack. Be it NDA or Hong Shui Q NDA, I think the Hong Kong government is depriving Hong Kong people of their choices in their um, lifestyle. For example, um, non-indigenous villages are forced to change their lifestyle. They chose to live in Hong Shui Kiu originally because they would prefer a lifestyle different than the, those living in urban areas. However, in the Hong Shui Kiu NDA plan, there is little space reserved for farmland. Uh, even if there is farmland, it is surrounded by schools and other facilities. It seems it will not be used for promoting uh, agriculture or for use by um, or fa original farmers. Another choice should be given as far as uh, lifestyle is concerned for Hong Kong people, but it seems that uh, our choices are becoming uh, fewer and fewer, and uh, there are many um, neat shopping malls proposed. But we are having more and more shopping malls in Hong Kong. It seems uh, that there are everywhere in every district. Can we be given more choices? The administration should not copy and paste the urban model in the uh, NDAs in anti-development and to change um, the lifestyle of uh, re people in remote areas into uh, urban. Lifestyle. 
I at the same time feel that the administration thinks that we don't need food in our daily living. We only need shopping malls or commercial、um, facilities. Farming has always been neglected. I hope that the administration can reserve more land for Hong Kong people to choose their alternative ways of living, and also、um, for growing food to feed Hong Kong people. Thank you very much. The next one, an alliance of concerned groups on low-income and CSSA groups. Ms. Pang, thank you, Chairman. We are concerned about agricultural activities and community development. Well, there is a less than 2.3 percent of self-sufficiency self rate of farming land in Hong Kong. And from information from the AFCD,、uh, there has always been a larger demand than supply for、uh, agricultural rehabilitation in the Hong Shui Q NDA.、Uh, originally, there were 10 percent of land for farming, but then only one percent has been retained. So this development cannot meet the needs for farmland in Hong Kong. So we suggest that in the new NDA, farming land should be retained. For example, Sanshan Chun. As for community economy, in NDA, a lot of commercial facilities and hotels will be built. Of course, these can provide jobs, but whether they can benefit the local people is is a doubt. So we hope that in the NDA there will be small shops and also、um, mega bazaars to benefit local people and also develop the local economy. And also local people can be offered jobs. Thirdly, in the NDA. Um, the non-indigenous villages are affected, but whether their views are respected is quite dubious. So we should be consulting more of these non-indigenous villages. All right, a land concern group, Mr. Zhang. First of all, we are concerned not only about the planning. But also the planning process. We believe that the government should adequately consult local people's views, e farmers, and the shop owners, and especially the、um, non-indigenous villages and farmers. The government should not be sacrificing their original way of living and employment. They should take care of their situation and respect their wishes. For example, their wish to for no demolition and no removal. We are also concerned that the consultation document is silent on social economic impact. So it seems that the government is not aware of the impact on the livelihood of local people. So we can't judge what kind of price we have to pay for building this NDA. If we don't know who. The residents are their、uh, whether they rent or、um, bought their flat,、uh, their way of living, whether they have a self-sufficient lives by farming, or their production mode. Say, for example, how many are already working in the district, and they might not be able to work in there in the future. So, without all this information, we will not be able to assess the impact of. Um, the project on local people. We are also concerned about the fact that once the land has been planned at this、uh, study stage, a lot of the residents and farmers are being forced out of their homes, homes because the property、uh, owners or landowners may chase them away and ask them to hand over the land. This is a nightmare to them. 
Fourthly, we are also concerned about farming development. In the Shenzhen Western Highway, near it, there is this vast tract of land for farming. Uh, the land between Sam San San Chun and Lin Sam Chin. This piece of land is for farming. And and can the serve as a good um, linkage area for the igri tree, which is going to be preserved. And in Lao Fao Shan, there is wetland. Um, these sites are of good ecological value, and we should not rezone them for residential purposes. We are also concerned about this. The land planned for farming and and uh, some land for uh, zoned for open space can also be used for farming. For example, in the northern part of the area, there is this um, large tract of agricultural land, and in the stage two PODP that has been planned as a new town or a town park. Can the original farms there be included as part of the par town park? These farms can also provide jobs to local people and provide food for the whole of Hong Kong. Also, we are very concerned about the agricultural rehabilitation. The government has reserved land for that purpose. But then there are uh, um, some 103 hectares of land for farms. But then now only 10.5 hectares of land have, have been reserved for farming, and an additional four hectares has been zoned as farmland. But as what the Conservancy Association said, uh, farmers would find it difficult to engage in agricultural rehabilitation. Uh, these pieces of land are also private plots, and we can't guarantee that, um, that agricultural rehabilitation can be carried out. Next, Mr. Zhang from Labour Party. Uh, land is an important resource in urban development, or else the administration will not be scramble for land in Hong Kong. In urban planning, we have to do with how to uh, zone the land for um, development, from Nyenti to Kutong and to uh, Hong Shui Q. The government has been scrambling for land and trying to phasing out the farm farmland in Hong Kong. The Hong Shui Q several times. Uh, more in size than Hong Hong Shui Kyu. Um, there will be a population of some 200,000 people. Uh, 100,000 jobs will be created. What are these figures telling us? What? Who are the people who are going to benefit? So this is really uh, a way of further furthering, further widening the wealth gap. Uh, the government has been using the same model in development. There is a, a railway station. Uh, there is an MTRCL project. There are big property developers. Let's look at the nearby Tin Shui Wai and Chang Kuan O. In these new towns, there are examples of property developers going in to develop the land and netting a profit. And there are the link reads, uh, shopping malls all around. Shopping mall. Connected by shopping mall, large chain stores everywhere, and people's lives have to depend largely on these retail chain stores. The administration claimed that some a hundred thousand jobs will be offered and there will be land for special industries. But the reality is this. <coughs> it it is trying to turn in Hong Shui Kyu into a support area for the Chenhai district. Um, high price luxury apartments will be built, um, and then shops will be built to create to serve these um, elites. The big property developers. Developers are going to profiteer, and the professionals will 
lead a very comfort comfortable life there. But what about the grassroots people, the people who had the local people who are relocated within the di same district, or new migrants into the area? They would not be able to enjoy the success of this development project. Originally. There was local farming, there were bazaars and uh, small-scale factories in the area. People may not be very wealthy, but they are self-reliant and they lead a very um, good life. But what is going to happen in the future is a repetition of Tin Shui Wai New Town and the farming land ratio is too small. The big conglomerates are trying to play a part, and it will go to widen the wealth gap only. How can we allow the Hong Shui Q development project to develop in this way? This is grossly unreasonable. Now, next one, Ms. Wu from the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport in Hong Kong from the Logistics point of view, we are concerned about several points mentioned in the PODP about the size of the logistics area. It will be cut from 190 hectares to 62 hectares, i.e. two-thirds of the open um, space will be cut. This is grossly inadequate. Hong Shui Q is a very important uh, temporary storage area for the logistics industry. It is near Shenzhen with good transport networks. If we can't maintain the present scale of the logistics industry, then um, Hong Shui Q will be losing out in the logistics uh, sector. And this is very dangerous for Hong Kong, considering the fact that um, Hong Kong is being outdone by neighboring uh, ports like Shenzhen. In the consultation document, we also see that the government proposes uh, that containers be stacked higher and that multi-story uh, logistics uh, buildings can be built. We don't think this is a practical uh, option. At now, the uh, containers can, are already stacked uh, six to, in six to high stores, uh, seven stories, and the six to seven stories are the maximum limits, or else it will get too dangerous. Particularly when there is inclement weather, it will be particularly dangerous. Now, from the business point of view, um, using this multi-level approach will increase the cost of operation in the long term. Um, soaring cost of operation will do harm to Hong Kong's logistics industry. Lastly, the government has designated a logistics and technology quarter in the area and to build a, a modern generation storage. Uh, we think there is a need to, to develop modern logistics as sector. But then this model is incompatible with the current operations. And this modern sector cannot uh, replace existing operations. Now, we need low-cost facilities. Um, Short-term problems may also be created if the area is going to be reduced to 62 hectares. And then if modern operations are installed, the job opportunities will be cut uh, substantially. And the government has to devote more resources to help um, present wor workers now to transform and small and medium-sized operators will be dealt a blow to whether they have the resources to um, invest in modern uh, facilities is also dubious. Uh, so this is something that the government should also consider. Thank you very much. For your opinions, if you have a speaking notes, please write down your name on the speaking notes. And before you leave the meeting room, hand them over to the staff so that we would understand your views more clearly. Now I'll open the floor to members uh, for questioning. Five minutes for each member. Mr. Yu Si Wing. 
Emily Lau, Albert Chan. Three members. Mr. Yu Si Wing. Five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Just now, Ms. Fung Yuk Ling talked about the problem in Tianshui Wai. The biggest problem is um, inadequate commercial activities in this densely populated Tianshui Wai. This is the city uh, of tragedy because people are unwilling to travel outside um, the district for work. And for Hongshui QNDA, I think the it, the administration uh, has uh, placed a stronger focus on providing jobs. 100,000 jobs will be provided. But as some deputations put it, the as to how the jobs will be distributed among sectors is still unclear. I represent the tourism sector. And for tourism, it's not just about travel agencies and uh, hotels. There are. Uh, it's uh, connected to uh, retail, catering, and also some local activities. Arrangements can be made to visit villages, and I hope the administration could uh, think more about uh, promoting tourism. For Hong Shui Q, I think there are conditions suitable. For promoting tourism, it's close to Shenzhen Bay. It's convenient to go across the border to uh, eat or to shop or to have sightseeing, and also it's close to the wetland park in Hinshui Wai and Eagle Tree and uh, heritage uh, villages and mainlanders. Who visit Shenzhen will find that Shenzhen is gradually uh, urbanized and uh, little heritage is left. And if we can reserve and conserve our Hongshui Q, it will help promote tourism. If there is tourism in Hongshui Q, there'll be a uh, Business opportunities, and uh, there is um, therefore more room to provide more jobs than a hundred thousand. However, the plan does not provide the specifics. For the Kai Tak Airport Development Project, recently um, there is a new pro project in the pipeline called Kai Tak Fantasy. And there will be a planning and design competition, so that the tip of the Taitak runway uh, will be a site earmarked for public consultation. For views on tourism, to create a world-class tourist spot at the end of the tunnel, uh, runway. Well, um, putting aside whether it's suitable for uh, creating a world class tourist spot there, um, what I want to say is we should learn a lesson from the Kai Tak development uh, area. It's been over a decade before any concrete proposal is floated. For Hong Shui Q, any tourism plan should be put forward as soon as possible so that we can have um, supporting arrangements in this regard. Secondly, it's a large area. Apart from phase one, I don't know for phase two whether any sites are reserved as backup for hotel and commercial development in future. Two questions. Next, Ms. Emily Lau. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, deputations, for coming and express your views to Let's Go on this Saturday morning. I'd like to put a few questions to the Secretary. I wonder if uh, he is able to answer these questions. On non-Indigenous villages, from the local residents, we feel that uh, they think you're being unfair. Uh, you uh, give favoritism to uh, Indigenous villages. Is it the case? Secondly, 
for Hong Ok Chun Merchants Association, uh, Mr. Ng, on behalf of the association, uh, said that they have uh, industrial activities which cannot be relocated. Third point is about uh, rehabilitative farming. It's been mentioned in NENT NDAs as well. It's not uh, under the purview of uh, this secretary. I wonder if Mr. Kowing Man has done anything in this regard. You ask people to um, vacate the site, but you don't resettle them. How can you ask him to take your proposal? Mr. Chen. Thank you, Chairman. Now, on indigenous villages and non indigenous villages, I have never given any instruction to the planning department to accord priority to or give special treatment to any particular village. The staff of planning department only think from the perspective of professional planning and the uh, topographical features in conducting their planning. Now, as for the second point, I heard loud and clear the concerns and requests make. This is the stage two community engagement exercise. What is important is for us to get a deeper understanding and seek more views on the, uh, the project. And uh, when we come down to the detailed design stage for the project, we can have uh, we can be better um, informed. We still have stage three of the engagement exercise, and there are some small shops owners which will be affected apart from the existing arrangements of resettlement and compensation we will consider whether the government can do more on rehabilitative farming earlier in replying to members question uh, in this regard we already said that at present we work with the food and health bureau on the issue of rehabilitative farming, a proposal will be floated. Of course, previously we said that under the existing policy, assistance will be provided to farmers by way of matching to help them um, practice farming again. But we understand the matching service is not sufficient in resolving the problem. So we're doing something uh, in collaboration with the Food and Health Bureau. Uh, Chairman, the assistant uh, director sitting next uh, of planning department is uh, sitting next to uh, secretary. So please also explain as well. The uh, secretary said that uh, there is no favoritism. We're not picking on any particular uh, village. Uh, we have 29 villages in total, five of them. Uh, will be affected. They are closer to the uh, town center, so inevitably they will be affected. To the south of Castle Peak Road, there are non indigenous villages as well, and they won't be affected. So it's based on planning considerations and the geographical uh, locations that some villages will be affected. So, Chairman, well, have you explained to villages and uh, try to assist them? In fact, we have uh, during stage one and stage two, we visited each and every village. At the previous stage, to the south of Castle Peak Road, since there was no development need, those villages would be retained and they expressed satisfaction to the arrangement. For some other villages, because of the Hongshui Q station in future and because of the locations of villages um, being close to the town center, inevitably they would have to be demolished and the villages would have to be resettled. Mr. Albert Chen. Thank you, deputations, for coming and expressing your views on the positioning of Hong Shui Q NDA. Uh, I welcome more views on that. On 
new town developments over the years. New territories west have all along been neglected. In the uh, 80s, in Tun Mun, the situation was uh, dire. There were no schools, there were no buses. Uh, the so-called new t self-reliant new town was a total failure. In the end, the government had to um, revamp its concepts and upgrade the facilities. But nowadays, Trinwen is still facing a lot of problems. The other, uh, 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 the other new development area is Tin Shui Wai. In fact, for Chunwan, Kwai Chong, the situation is no better. All the unpopular um, and welcome facilities are moved to the new territories west. The uh, chemical waste uh, treatment facilities in uh, Chengyi, for example, and also other um, polluting industries in Tunmun. They're all relocated to um, this side of the town, but not other industries. We should not repeat the painful experience in Chengyi, Kwai Chong, and Tun Mun. What facilities will be provided to the 200,000 population in future? We need your support. Time and again, I um, reprimanded the government for neglecting the anti-West. For other areas, uh, they can have a station for a population of fifty to sixty thousand, but for Hong Shui Q, only one station to accommodate two hundred thousand population. And for Tian Shui Wai, even more absurd, five hundred thousand for one station. So it's just repeating the painful experience of Tian Mun and Hong Shui uh, and Tian Shui Wai. As for uh, whether we should have more commercial developments in Hong Shui Q. Uh, I hope you would also express your views on it. In the 90s, it was uh, suggested that Kwai Fong and Kwai Heng should uh, be developed as the uh, sub uh, central uh, or sub core district, but in the end, the plan changed. The only um, source of jobs come from Tongchong and the airport. Without the new airport, Tongchong will just experience the same painful uh, experience in residents in Kwai Chong did. So, on mass transportation and commercial development, um, I'd like, like to seek views from you. Uh, I still have some time left. Let's see who'd like to give their views. Who would like to take this challenge? Nobody. Oh, yes. It's a hole. On railway, I wonder if we have really thought it uh, through. In Tun Moon, we have LRT and West Rail. West Rail is uh, a kind of mass transportation that uh, tra convey commuters from one point to another. In Tun Moon, because no more jobs can be provided within the district, many residents need to travel to other districts to work. If the mass transport system cannot effectively transport these uh, residents to work um, in other areas, then this will be a tragic city. Now, for 175,000 population, over 80 of them have to travel outside or have to work outside the district. The uh, the the mass transport system cannot help to transport even one percent of the working population from Tun Mun Yunlong to urban areas. Uh, it will go down by 5.1%. So what will happen in future? A huge population will be congested at the terminus, but um, there, but it cannot. Uh, the system cannot uh, convey them to urban areas to work. Yes, just now, Mr. Chen made a point, and I'd like to supplement my views on commercial developments. In my speaking notes, I mentioned that if we are to have commercial developments, it must be of a certain scale. 
we should not just repeat the Kwai Fong and Chunwan experience. Garland. Just uh, well, a, a, a commercial building or a commercial shopping black complex would not suffice. If we have a size of over six million square feet, then that will be um, ideal. We also have to take care of the support facilities. If we build commercial complexes of th over three, six million square feet, and then if I want to establish an office there and no, there, there is no worker to be hired, then it's not going to work. So what needs to be done is for the government to move its offices in there first, and then gradually there will be uh, a cluster of population formed, and then more offices will move in. That's the experience that we have uh, so far in developing such uh, kinds of towns. Apart from uh, offices, we need hotels and other commercial facilities so that we can have a critical mass. to meet the relevant demands. Say in Kowloon Bay, um, the industrial district has been transformed to a commercial district, and it, that took a long time. And the government had to accept the fact that the uh, property prices in the initial stage might be very low, and that may last for a long time before sufficient experience could be accumulated. We have to accept that this, there is a time lag in um, planning for land development and the actual use of the commercial facilities. Hong Kong people used, are used to adopting the view of Hong Kong, uh, of a Hong Kong people-oriented uh, perspective. In the next 10 to 20 years, there will be development in the Pearl River Delta. Shenzhen's Shanghai will become a financial area with the top highest uh, property prices. Now through Kong, uh, the Western Corridor, it takes 10 minutes to go from Shanghai to Hong Kong. Now in Guangdong, there will be a free trade zone. And that covers Hengqing in Zhuhai, Qianhai in Shenzhen, and also Nansha. And this Hong Kong, um, Zhuhai, uh, Macau free trade zone is going to be established in the next decade or so in the long term plan. This whole district will become an important economic area in southern China. We have to be forward looking in our planning. But actually, not many people will need a mass transit to go to work in the urban areas. What, or rather, I attach more importance to cross-boundary transport. And maybe uh, ten years down the road, other people, uh, people from other districts, may go to this district for for to work. Now, Hong Shui Q is the place nearest to the Pearl River Delta with a population of uh, 100 million. So this may be a new development direction for Hong Kong. So we need a development plan with commercial facilities, hotels, and new industries like um, accounting services, banks, and so on. They should be developed in Western NT. So this should not be an area just for housing people. Of course, the um, Tin Shui Wei example is not a good one. The 300,000 population in Tin Shui Wei should be pinning their hopes on the Hong Shui Q NDA because a lot of jobs will be created there, and 
ten years or twenty years later, they will be. It will play an important part in Hong Kong's development. And Hong Kong's actually development center is moving westward. At the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge will be commissioned several years later, and the Kong Sham Western Highway is here, and through a submarine tunnel, the uh, Lan Tao Island will be connected to Tun Moon, and then there will be the XRL um, in the pipeline, and all these will connect Hong Kong and the mainland. So the center of our business activity will no longer be in the central district or the Chim Sha Jai district. Actually, in central Kosei Bay, Mong Kok, and Chim Sha Jai, the commercial facilities are already too cramped. And they can no longer ad accommodate um, mainland travelers and overseas travelers. We have to be forward looking and we have to make a choice. With all these con very congested conditions in the urban areas, should we be doing nothing but should we be doing something else? So against this overall background, I agree that there should be uh, more development areas in the NT. Of course, we are going to affect uh, the people in that district, but we have to make uh, good arrangements for them. Say for people who would like to engage in rehabilitative farming, their opinions should be respected and the original way of life should be preserved. Well, several deputations have um, put up their hands and I will I'll allow the members to uh, speak first. Mr. Lee Chuck Yan. Thank you, Chairman. I want the government to clarify. Is it true that Hong Kong will be made part of the plan of the Pearl River Delta, and then Hong Shui Kyu is going to serve Chen Hai? What's the whole project of the plan? Is it just for the development of Chen Hai? Well, if it is the case, then people can well, my to live in Chen Hai. We, we shouldn't go along with developing Hong Shui Kyu. It would be, make it easier for them if they actually live in Chen Hai. And I'm also worried about the development uh, model in Hong Kong. Should we just uh, be all the time depending on the mainland? Should we also be instead um, developing our own niche in our economy? Or else we'll be losing out. Um, so I want the government to clarify first whether the planning for Hong Shui Kyu is for the purpose of serving Chen Hai. Secondly, whether the district can accommodate um, such a huge population. There will be a uh, 100,000 jobs, and then some 200,000 people will live there. So a total of... Um, over 200,000 people will live and walk around there. So what about the job opportunities? Can you create some jobs in Ten Shui Wai? I object uh, jobs um, being offered by shopping malls. Are we having already too many shopping malls in Hong Kong already? Uh, are we so lucky in our, in our imagination, in the ability to imagine? Um, you also talked about the logistics industry. What's the future development of the sector? There are a number of warehouses in the um, industry, and we're just worried that uh, the number will drop in the future. Is there a need to further develop the logistics industry? All right, if all these facilities are commissioned, and we suddenly find that we shouldn't be developing the sector at all, then it's uh, it's no good. And then there will be a lot of commercial facilities and, and hotels in Hong Shui Kyu. We should not be adopting a single model of development. I think it has to do with 
a lot to do with planning. Now, as for the capacity of our public transport modes, there is only a spare capacity of two five. Uh, 25,000 passengers in the West Rail, and there will be increased population in Hongshui, Kyo, Tianshui, Wai, and Tunmun. And all of them depend on just one railway line, the West Rail, and then the railway will be stretched to its capacity. Um, shouldn't something be done? Now, as for rehabilitative farming, what is the policy? And what is the policy for resettling the farmers? Well. The government just uh, flatly tells these farmers that they are not eligible. Well, the people who originally lead a very good life there are not set resettled satisfactorily. And you are focusing on commercial development only. So you are just benefiting the property, the, the owners who have hoarded land in the area. So these are my three questions. Uh, all right, Mr. F Dr. Fernando Zhang first. No answer from them? They don't know how to answer? Well, you can just tell me that um, I don't have land there, and then I don't know how to answer. If I do have land, then I will give you a reply. Who to answer? So my question is directed to the administration whether they are planning the Hongshui queue for the for serving the interest of Shanghai. Mr. While the administration hasn't responded to Mr. Hong Siu Q's question yet. Dr. Fernando Zhang. Well, perhaps I'll answer on behalf of the secretary. Sorry, this big. So the secretary, uh, the chairman said that I will um, give a reply at one go after all the members have asked. I'm just following the directions from the chairman. So chairman, what's your view? Uh, Mr. Yu Zi Wing raised several questions. I've asked the administration to give a reply, and then starting from Albert, Mr. Albert Chen, then the secretary will answer. The members one by one, but then I think that um, the secretary can answer members' questions at one go. Dr. Fernando Zhang. Mr. Lee's question on whether Hong Shui Kyu is to serve Chen Chen Hai. Well, the answer is simple because land prices. Are higher in Shanghai than Hongshui Q. All right, Hong Kong is lacking land, but then Shenzhen's um, problem is even worse. There is an insufficient supply of land in Shenzhen. At the border, you can see, or at the boundary, you can see that there are a lot of high rises. Now, at the other side of the river in Hong Kong, we don't have many houses. And on the other side of the river, um, there are a lot of high rises, very congested. So it's clear that it's really Shenzhen is lacking land. So the answer is obvious that what the development of Western NT is for. Well, under the development plan, the local residents are going to suffer. Mr. Long from Tin Sam Chun Concern Group said that their villages are being wiped out. What will happen to the villages? Their squatters have been on the government land for several decades, and the elderly people are still still living there. They may not be eligible for PRH. What's your entire package for them? Now, yesterday at the uh, Finance Committee, we did discuss about the compensation criteria, but the proposal was not endorsed yet. But then the compensation packages for NENT and um, Northern NT, the proposals will be forwarded or presented uh, later on. 
Now for the development of Western NT, will there be another compensation package? Can you make it clear to us? Or will that be based on the general um, compensation uh, criteria? Mr. Chen from Hong Yi Kok said that a number of villages will be affected, and he urges you um, that the villages be relocated within the same district. Would you consider that? Can you ask the secretary to answer instantly? In all fairness, just now four members asked questions. I um, did not ask the administration to respond. I hope the administration would give a consolidated reply to the questions from members. Mr. Yu Si Wang, Mr. Albert Chen, Mr. Li Chak Yan, and Dr. Fernando Zhang. So, a consolidated reply to these four members. You're using my time, Chairman. You still have time? Five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. But, Chairman, I still have follow up questions. Are we having new rules? Second round? Second round? I haven't used up my time and I need to queue up for the second round. <laughs> Secretary. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Mr. Chen Tong Ngoc mentioned Tianhai, not me. So to say that it's the government's position. Uh, that uh, it should uh, tally with Tianhai development. This is not the government's position. Bid NNT or Hong Shui Q, these are new town developments for Hong Kong people. Now, for the uh, new development area in NT West Planning and Engineering Study, it started in 2003. Because of the economy at the time, the IVS was introduced. And to say that the NT West planning study is tailor made for mainland tourists, I don't think this argument holds water. In 2003, the planning um, engineering study uh, took into account the housing and development needs of Hong Kong. We need housing and uh, jobs, and that is why the proposal to develop Hong Shui Kill was floated. The circumstances in society at the time, coupled with population growth and housing needs, etc., um, these have uh, tapered, and the plan was uh, put on the back burner for the time being. Subsequently, according to the 2030 uh, planning vision and strategy, the uh, proposal reviewed the overall long-term development needs of Hong Kong, and uh, the, it recommended the development of a number of NDAs, including Hong Shui Q. In 2007-08, it was announced as one of the 10 infrastructure projects. In August 2011, we commissioned a consultant to conduct the planning and engineering study. And in November 20 and December 2011, we conducted two rounds of public engagement exercise. We discussed with the community the vision and role of Hong Shui QNTA and the planning principles to provide um, a direction for the PODP. Having collated the views of the f uh, collected in the first stage of the exercise and after analyzing the views, in early July this year, we put forward the preliminary outline development plan and we um, Commence stage two com community engagement, and we also attended the relevant logical meetings to reply to members' questions. So, the position, as far as Hong Shui Q NDA is concerned, is very clear. This is a new town for the people of Hong Kong. There are a number of concerns about this new and. 
uh, new development area, on planning, on transportation, on employment. I can invite Ms. Phyllis Lee, Deputy Director of Planning, to say something more about planning. On transportation, I can invite Mr. Chan from CDD to give you a picture of um, this uh, area. As for job opportunities and the local economy, as mentioned by deputations just now, Hong Shui QNDA is located at a strategic location. We must use the advantages or leverage on the advantages uh, we have, apart from um, links to mass transport. It's convenient to travel from Hong Shui Kyu to either the urban areas or to the mainland. In considering the Hong Shui Kyu NDA, we must consider how we could um, realize the potential. I agree with Ms. Fong just now that we must have more shops in the streets. We must uh, increase the vibrancy of the community and promote the economy uh, at the uh, community level so that more jobs can be provided to the neighborhood. Uh, I thank you for this comment. When we discuss with our planning department colleagues, we think that this should also be the focus. But at the same time, we must not have a closed system on the development of logistics industry as the backup uh, facility for the airport, as mentioned by another deputation. This is also our consideration. Maybe I'll pause here for the questions yet to be answered in a moment. Myself and my colleagues will try our best to elaborate and, uh, on the, the details. Next. Maybe I'll give some time to deputations here. Three minutes, shall we? Two minutes. Mr. Chang, C. Lut from Labour Party. And then Dr. Tang. Two points. Just now, Mr. Chen from Hong Yi Kok made it very clear. Of course, Secretary Mr. Chen is going to deny it, but if we also look at the surrounding NDAs, NENT, all the pro establishment uh, camp members and think tanks have been making the same point. The rural M areas in the northern part of the new territories should be used for economic integration with the mainland. Um, on the face of it is a rose tinted picture. It's for the purpose of economic development. But the question is who is in charge of the development? Um, Li Xiao Yan talked about job opportunities. Now, let's think about it. In new towns, we now rely uh, all the consumption takes place in large shopping malls. If you are a salesman in uh, in uh, one of the shops, you will remain one 10 years down the road. But uh, in a small community, when if you are, are a craftsman in a small shop, then 10 years you may become uh, boss, the boss of a small shop. So we talk about development opportunities. Who reaps the biggest profit? Those with vested interests. This is the biggest problem. Secondly, don't talk about job opportunities. Let's talk about development of the community as a whole. Mr. Albert Chan talked about Kwai Chong as an example. Kwai Chong was actually um, on the fringe of the old core uh, area from uh, uh, Hong Kong to Kowloon, uh, and then further expansion took place. So it evolved with time, so the situation is completely different. Thank you, Dr. Tang. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Tang. Uh, just now, 
as someone mentioned, whether only one station in Hong Shui Q NDA can accommodate the population. And I'd like to express my views on transportation. If we look carefully in the paper for Hong Shui Q NDA, there are basically three stations for use by the population. The first one is Tinsho, the new Tinsho Y station, which will be in the town center in future. There are two more actually. One is Tinsho Y on the east side, and on the south side there is another station to cater for the needs. Now about the railway development in Hong Kong, of course. We can consider it if there is opportunity to have an additional same station, but we also need to look at the whole picture. That's the model adopted by Singapore. They also use a railway-based development approach, complemented with efficient feeder services uh, involving various kinds of transport. In fact, in the paper, in Tin Shui Wai NDA, 45% of the population lives within a 500 meter radius of the station. The figure is um, quite good comparing to other NDAs. So, if we uh, do good planning for feeder services, this problem should be resolved. Who would like to respond? Chairman, on planning and transportation, can we have a couple of minutes so that my colleague can respond to those questions? Perhaps I'll ask Mr. Chan to respond to the point on transportation. Thank you, Chairman. The highways department is uh, carrying out a railway strategy 2000 uh, update exercise and in the consultancy study started in uh, March 2011 and uh, two rounds of public consultation have been conducted I understand that by the end of this year or the beginning of next year the report will be ready they will look at the uh, um, territory-wide uh, transport facilities and support measures in Hong Kong. Now, according to the information given by MTRCL, uh, during peak hours, um, the uh, passenger capacity is uh, 50,000. If we upgrade the signaling system, they can uh, have an ex uh, uh, upgrade of capacity to 75,000. So um, it's an it 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 will go up by fifty percent, and uh, for Yunlong, Tin Moon, Tin Shui Wai, we understand that the population in NT West is about one point one million, with an additional one hundred and seventy thousand. It's about a sixteen percent increase. During peak hours, you might still have peak of a peak between eight to nine a.m. Uh, perhaps there will be a twen or uh, ten or, or twenty minute interval, which uh, will be uh, the most crowded uh, period. But with the supporting measures, I understand that the MTRCL can increase the frequency or increase the number of train cars. If residents don't need to wait at all, even at the peak of the peak hours, then that means a, a train will need to uh, uh, carry um, many cars, and th we will continue to liaise with the highways department. And uh, before the first intake, population intake of Hong Shui Kyu, we hope that the Hong Shui Kyu station will be completed. Now on feeder service, with the hundred thousand job opportunities during peak hours, um, traffic flow will be heavy, and uh, according to the PODP, 
the roads marked in white can actually be narrowed. Uh, narrowed down for space to be provided for feeder service. For example, LRT. LRT, of course, is quite an uh, outdated system. We will think of uh, new systems to be implemented. And after we receive uh, views from the public, we will collect the views and consider uh, whether any green or what green transport can be provided as feeder service. People are concerned about transport. The administration that there is a road uh, linking Yunlong to Kowloon. What about from Tunmun to Kowloon? There will be a connecting road from Lantau to Tunmun. What about from Tunmun to Chunwan? Can you consider building a railway? Connecting the two places. Well, we will convey your view to the highways department. They are now updating the 2000 railway strategy, which covers the whole of Hong Kong. I will relate your views to the highways department for their consideration whether a railway can be built between Chunmun and Chunwan. The consultant is supervised by the Transport and Housing Bureau, so I will convey your view to the Bureau. And the first round, Dr. N. Zhang, please. Thank you, Chairman. Secretary, I'm concerned about jobs. As we all know, There is a huge population in Tinsho Wai, and some of the, or a rather major portion of the HOS were turned to BRH. So there is a huge population of the grassroots workers, and jobs are far and few between. The entire population in Tinsho Wai is 300,000. After the finished completion of the Tinying estate, but jobs offered there are only three thirty thousand in number. The original, the government's original intention was was good because there was a Tinmun industrial estate nearby, but unfortunately. Um, the Industrial district in Tunmun is dominated by warehouses, storage yards, and they can't offer many jobs. In your planning, you said that there will be a hundred thousand jobs. The new Population is going to be two hundred twenty thousand. Then a hundred thousand jobs is quite good. But I want to know that if we proceed with the development work, the administration can tell us clearly where these are one thousand hundred. 100,000 jobs come from. I've talked to residents in Tinsho Wai, and a lot of people are unhappy because they don't, they can't find jobs there. If they have to travel to the urban areas to work, the traveling time can take three hours, and baby or children care services are insufficient either. And you have to travel for three hours to go to urban areas to work. And then when you come back from work, you have to take care of your children. And it is very exhausting. Well, for any new town development, there are two things that we need to take care of. One is how people can make a living. And second, what kind of recreational facilities are there? Now, a lot of people now go to Yunlong. 
Um, and over the weekends, there are a number of mainland travelers or tourists in Yunlong, and the Yunlong now is even busier than Nathan Road in Mong Kok. So I wonder whether along the riverside you can build some recreational facilities. In Tin Shui Wai, we have a very beautiful riverside. Um, from morning uh, till evening, uh, the people argue there. There have been a lot of arguments in at dawn. There is this uh, bazaar, and people will complain that the stores are blocking the roads. While people are just trying to make a living, and we shouldn't ha have all these arguments. Now, in the evening, when people come back from work, um, a lot of men would be uh, relaxing by the riverside, drinking a can of beer, and some people may even be singing there. And then these people are being chased away, and they're not allowed to sing in those areas where they can go. Where can they go? They cannot afford going to karaoke's. Now, for grassroots people, uh, karaoke is too costly. So, Secretary, I hope that the administration can give careful consideration the two points I m mentioned, apart from hospitals, transport, and and so on, how they can make a living and how and providing recreational facilities for the residents. And also, the third thing is about. Uh, market, food market. Well, they should not be made to go to Yunlong again to um, to buy food. All right, second round. Then I'll ask the um, administration to respond. Ms. Emily Lau, Dr. Fernando Zhang, Mr. Lee Chak Yan, any other members? Three minutes each. Chairman. I would like the deputations to respond to the secretary's reply. The first is about the impact on the non-indigenous villages. The director said that they are not targeting the non-indigenous villages and also on rehabilitative farming. Uh, the secretary that said that he's working with uh, Dr. Ko Wing Man on coming up with a new policy. So deputations, can you tell me um, what do you feel about um, their comments? Anyone from the deputations, please uh, put up your hand. Well, let's l take a look at the uh, development document. It says that it is not discriminating against the non-indigenous villages. But from the map, we can see clearly that in the um, 800 hectare or so development area, and the indigenous villages are scattered all around, some 20 of them. Not one of them is affected. But we have only five or several non-indigenous villages. They are scattered all around, but they are being wiped out in the development plan. Well, I do think they have discrimination against us. Now, I want to respond to Mr. Lee Chuck Yan and uh, Dr. Fernando Jung's remarks. I have evidence here to show that the government has considered um, Chen Hai's needs in the development plan. In the first stage um, CE exercise, there was this map. There was the, the, the name of Chen Hai didn't even appear. There was just the name of Sha Kao. But in the third uh, plan, um, PDOP plan, and then Hong Shekyu is the center of development. And then um, above it is uh, Chen Hai. So I don't believe that there is no consideration for Chen Hai in the development plan. Next to Mr. Fu Kaho, I want to follow up on this. Um, the two members from the Labour Party said that there is close relationship between Chen Hai and Hong Shui Q, and it would have a, a deep impact on the development in in Chen Hai. Mr. Wong Hei Man next. I want to ask about rehabilitative uh, farming. 
Perhaps the administration can respond to this question. I wonder whether I have misunderstood you. The they are talking with the Food and Health Bureau on rehabilitative farming. In the NENT project, the administration also said that they are talking to the Food and Health Bureau. Is there a special rehabilitative farming arrangement? You are talking to the Food and Health Bureau. Are you talking about the same model for the NENT? Would that model be used here in Hong Shui Q? That's my first question. Second, when we talk about rehabilitative farming, the administration should give us some figures for our reference, say, basic statistics like how many farmers are affected in the development plan, how large is the area of abandoned and fallow farmland, and where is it located? If we have such uh, figures, then it would help us in our discussions. Would the administration respond to this, please? Next one. Dr. Kwakaki, five minutes. Chairman, I have two questions. I wonder whether the secretary knows what the government policy is earlier on at the at another panel, um, the government is asking for funding on fisheries development in Hong Kong and the development of fisheries and agricultural industries. The government is not giving any assistance at all, but rather it is trying to wipe out the industries. Um, have the different bureaus talked among yourselves? On the one hand, it is a seeking funding of some $500 million for the uh, Sustainable Fisheries Development Fund. But at the same time, the indigenous or non-indigenous villages would love to live in the original uh, piece of land. You are trying to um, chase them away. Now, Ms. Dr. Ko is not here today, but in the Hong Shui Q development plan. How are you going to compensate um, farmers who practice sustainable farming here in this area? Because their t land is going to be taken away from them. Also, in land resumption, um, well, the exercises is conducted among the non indigenous villages, but then you are allowing the indigenous villages to stay. This is an unfair policy. You are phasing out the non indigenous villages. Why such a policy? You seem to be tailor making your development plan to give favor to those who have bargaining power, but there for those non indigenous villages who don't have much power and whose uh, traditional industries we do appreciate and and for them, why are you trying to uh, make life difficult for them? For traditional industries, is the government lending them assistance so that they can survive? Secretary, Dr. Kwakaki, Hobson, that you can reply now. Well, members have raised several questions and comments. Uh, for now, perhaps I'll defer to the planning director to talk about um, planning and employment. He will explain our considerations here. The positioning of the Hong Shui Kyu NDA, it will provide housing land and it will offer jobs. This will be a new economic growth point for Hong Kong as well. Uh, you may 
ask why uh, we come up with a figure of 100,000 uh, jobs for commercial land use in the center of Hongshui Q. 690,000 uh, square feet of commercial space will be built, including hotels, commercial complexes, and office space. In the residential area, there will be shops, and there will be shops in housing um, estates. There will be commercial space, and some 40,000 jobs will be created. For special industries and the logistics industry, 50,000 jobs roughly can be provided because it spanned over 72 hectares of land. And uh, there are also GIC sites providing about 10,000 job opportunities. So altogether, this is our rough estimate. On another point, the scale of job opportunities and transportation. Around 45 of the popu 45 percent of the population lives in the vicinity of the, the railway, and we also like to relieve the uh, traffic congestion along the north-south direction, and we try to. Uh, provide more jobs within the district to alleviate the traffic demand. Let me supplement. Just now, Mr. Ho asked whether uh, when we do our planning, we consider from the economic perspective. Just now, when I replied to the member's question, as far as economic development is concerned, we must leverage on the good geographical location of the Hongshui Q NDA. We must understand, Chairman, that every day tens of thousands of people travel across the border to work and return on the same day. So when we plan for the Hongshui Q NDA, We should not just look at northwest of NT. We must look at the wider picture. My colleague explained just now, and Mr. Chen Kin Chung and Mr. Mm, deputations, representatives also made this point. There must be uh, measures to support the local economy. And we must also consider the impact on plants and factories. On retail, as Deputy Director mentioned, with its good geographical location, we should consider um, using the uh, site for uh, backup facilities for the airport and the logistics industry. For the first batch of population intake, it will take place in 2023-24, which is 10 years down the road. What will happen to our economic development in these 10 years? We don't know. But as far as planning is concerned, we must reserve land. To cope with changing economic uh, uh, development needs. Dr. Fernando Chang talked about the compensation scheme for NT Northwest, whether the, um, there will be any clearance on relocation. At this stage, our work is focused on planning and engineering study, on compensation arrangements, on farm rehabilitation, I already replied to another member's question. This is the direction. When we come to the third stage, more detailed arrangements will be announced for discussion. 
when we discuss with the Food and Health Bureau, when we consider a policy, when we um, I mean, when we develop the community, we think about the policies. And today we're here to seek your views. Dr. Kwokaki talked about non-indigenous villages. Just now, Ms. Lee, Deputy Director, and myself already answered the question. Planning is based on the topographical features of the area, whether it's a non-indigenous village or not. That's not the key consideration in planning the layout of the NDA. There are views on the layout of the NDA, and we understand that some existing residents will be affected in the NDA project. We will try to minimize the impact, and we can go back and further review the situation. Mr. Abraham Sheck, first round, five minutes. Thank you. Secretary Paul Chen just now mentioned that whether they are um, indigenous residents or not, it's not a key consideration. I, I don't know if I catch it uh, correctly, but ev uh, but all planning should be people based. You should put the people first. If you say it's not important to distinguish between indigenous villages and non-indigenous villages, then how for whom is the planning made? Can Mr. Chan elucidate on this point? I don't know if I uh, got him correct uh, correctly. Sorry, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Sorry, um, I might have used the wrong diction. I am talking about the distinction distinction between indigenous village and non-indigenous village, as far as the locations are concerned. Of course, we are concerned about the impact on the residents. Uh, like Mr. Abraham Shack um, said, we cannot neglect the impact of the project on the people. Uh, we need to. to uh, I need to control the time. So, second round, we have uh, three minutes for the following members, and then I'll draw a line, and they are, uh, I mean, and then the administration can give a reply. And they are Dr. Fernando Zhang, Mr. Li Chu Yan. Dr. Fernando Zhang, three minutes for the second round. Dr. Zhang. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, you took away two and a half minutes from my. Uh, earlier speaking time. Anyway, we see that throughout, Secretary, from what he said just now, revealed something. The whole plan to put it in Secretary's work uh, must be regarded um, from the perspective of the whole planning concept of Hong Kong and Zhuhai and uh, Guangdong. You always talk about leveraging on the uh, geographical location. And what is meant by that? This because it's close to Tianhai. You can't say it's close to Central, right? More than six months ago, I recall that uh, Liang Chenying visited Shangshui and he said, that it's the center. Of course, it's not the center of Hong Kong. He was talking about the middle point between Shenzhen and Hong Kong. So clearly, in their development plan, um, the SAR government is minded to use up all the land in the new territories because it's linked. Uh, the northern side is linked to Shenzhen, and um, there is huge potential for development. However, you are money-minded instead of uh, putting people first, like Mr. Abraham Shack said.
if the land is、uh, suitable for economic development in the future, you will、um, use the land for economic development. You pay no respect to the、uh, livelihood of local residents for light industries and traditional industries. You totally ignore them. This is the flaw of this plan. And secretary just now admitted that at this stage, about.、Uh, In situ resettlement, reha farm rehabilitation, compensation arrangements, etc., no consideration has given have been given to all these matters. That's the public's concern. If you tell members of the public that this will be demolished soon, your your home will soon become a park, and、uh, your farm will soon become a site for logistics use. You must tell them what will happen to them. You say that the village will be、uh, wiped out, and you don't tell them what will happen to them. Chairman, I don't think you will be happy with it either. You represent the interests of、um, anti-residents. So at this stage, the administration should consider these matters as soon as possible and、uh, give concrete or specific proposals. Chairman, please、uh, make up for the time、um, you take took away.、Uh, ask them to respond first. Secretary, reply. Thank you, Chairman. Advantageous geographical location of Hong Shui Kiu. It's a straw man fallacy, the way Dr. Fernando Zhang put it just now. It's a convenient location to go from Hong Shui Kiu to BCP or to the airport. It's definitely situated at、um, good location as backup facility for the airport. It's unfair to、uh, make the、uh, accusation of using Hong Shui Kiu as uh, the uh, link to Shenzhen. On resettlement and compensation, yes, these are necessary, and the consideration will be given. But we have yet to reach the final stage. I don't think at present the details should be too much. Details should be disclosed. It's still undecided whether some villages will be wiped out or not. This is not the final decision, and if we tell the villages in advance、uh, what will happen to them when the village is torn down in the future, before we have a final decision on it, this will only cause、uh, the unnecessary panic. Members of this council and deputations attending this meeting. Today, thank you for all your views and suggestions. I will definitely work with my colleagues and thoroughly consider your views and review the situation. We will try our best in doing the planning properly, whilst minimizing. The impact on local residents and、um, small plant operators and small shop operators. Should they be affected? Definitely, we will try our best to do our work in relation to resettlement and compensation. Thank you. Our time is almost up, and、uh, Mr. Li Chengyan has a、uh, has a question to ask. And Mr. Chen,、uh, a de deputation would like to supplement, and the administration would also like to respond as well. I, if、uh, there is no objection, I will extend the mean,、uh, meeting by fifteen minutes to ten fifty-five, Mr. Li Chengyan. Chairman, I think secretary, you are、um, not engaging public opinion at all. Uh, you talk about、uh, not willing to cause unnecessary panic, and that's why you don't disclose the、uh, compensation details, etc. That's a really wrong line of thinking. 
you are planning to take down the village and you don't uh, tell the villagers how they will be resettled or what the compensation arrangements will be, and you say that you're co um, you don't do this to avoid causing unnecessary panic, but in fact you're doing it, uh, Chairman, uh, uh, Secretary. Remember, I asked you to visit the village. I asked you to attend a meeting in person, and you told me that this is stage two planning, and the planning department is responsible for consultation. So I, Paul Chan, will not visit the village. The first question is whether you will. Their comments. So, can you go down to the meetings? You go and tell them that your panic is unnecessary. Well, my understanding is that people are really panicked. Secondly, 50,000 jobs from the logistics industries, 50,000 jobs from the commercial activities. You haven't answered my question on job opportunities. Really, can the logistics sector do well? We already have logistics facilities in Tin Moon and Kwai Fong. Is it going to work, this proposal? If that works, why don't you do something? Do set up the logistics sector in Tin Shui Wai. The Tin Shui Wai population don't have any jobs. And you are now telling them that you can go to work in Hong Shui Q ten years later. If you are confident that people invest in the sector, why don't you start immediately setting up logistics facilities in Tin Shui Wai? We have this Tin Sao Bazaar. I'm angry about it, but let's not dwell on to it here. We have talked about <coughs> creating job opportunities for ten years, and now you're telling us that Tin Shui residents should wait for 10 years and go to work to Hong Shui Q. Why don't you do something in Tin Shui now? You haven't answered my question. Mr. Chen, Tony Chen? Sorry, the speaker is not coming through. For handling non-indigenous villages, there is in fact a uh, land resumption mechanism established for Chao Yun Chun. At that time, Hong Yu Kok assisted a lot in the project for land or farmers confirmed by AFCD for uh, farming rehabilitation, where the, a license will be issued to them and a piece of land will be identified for them to practice in rehabilitative farming. So, with our help, we managed to find a piece of land for several dozen non-indigenous villages to practice rehabilitative farming there. I'm happy to tell members that under this arrangement, the new Choi Yun Chun is now being built. So the government should take special, special measures in special circumstances and should take reference from the way it is done in Chao Yun Chun. For non indigenous villages and indigenous villages in their relocation, the Hang Yi Ko will give its biggest assistance in the exercise and to help out the government. Second point on Chen Hai. Hong Kong is a small economy. We understand that there is this big economy next door, and it's not reasonable for us not to consider that big economy next door. Now, as what members said, um, 300,000 people in Tin Shui are looking for jobs, and we don't want to see um, commercial complexes only um, the business center is in central district and within the territory of Hong Kong we need a lot of support facilities for example um, banks settlement legal services and accounting services sorry all these uh, services have to be um, set up to provide local job opportunities sorry your time is up Mr. Tony Chan you please um, stop speaking because your time is up so I'll now ask the administration to respond. 
please give a detailed reply to the questions. Five minutes. Secretary, thank you, Chairman. Of course, I visited the Hong Shui Q NDA. Not only that, I also visited Yunlong South and also other areas where studies are being conducted. We have, and I, I and my team have taken a detailed look. As for the development of logistics industry in Hong Shui Q NDA, Mr. Zhang has already left. He spoke on behalf of the sector on the development of the sector. In fact, in our study, we saw that in this area, there are different logistics services being provided. As to whether it is suitable to develop logistics facilities in Tin Shui Wai, perhaps I'll defer to Ms. Lee to explain. Hong Shui Kyu Ha Chun in some uh, logistics facilities there, they are quite uh, land extensive in its operations. Um, they pose a uh, some nuisance to neighboring residents. So our direction is to build some high-value logistics facilities. Of course, we had views today about providing for open space for low-cost logistics facilities. We'll consider that. Um, when we consider planning for logistics facilities, uh, the number one consideration is uh, transport convenience and also avoid um, posing nuisance to neighboring um, districts. We will try to um, Plan it at the sort of margin areas of the of the uh, NDA. In the next stage, we would also be considering um, improving the transport between Hong Shui Kyu and Tin Shui Wai to in order um, to facilitate people moving across districts to work. Perhaps I'd ask Miss Lee to further talk about the considerations given to Tin Shui Wai in our Hong Shui Kyu planning. In terms of private uh, and public housing and job creation. In Tin Shui Wai, uh, we built a large number of PRH. And in planning for Hong Shui Kyu, we have come up with this um, public housing, private housing ratio in that um, the uh, a ratio of 61 to 39 is drawn up. So there will be more private housing to improve the housing mix. As far as facilities are concerned, along the riverside, um, in areas near Tunshao Bazaar, will improvement work will be carried out. Um, we will build commercial residential areas to provide more jobs. As to how Tin Shui white people can travel to the nearby railway stations, we would also do improvement works along the Tin Shui Wai River and its neighboring areas. Anything to add from you, Secretary? Ms. Lee said the public private housing mix is 51 to 45, but um, but including the Tin Shui Wai housing, the ratio is 69 to 31. So we thank deputations for coming up uh, to express your views, and we have also received your written submissions. We um, cherish your views. When we go back, we will carefully consider them. We will consider whether Further adjustments can be made to respond to your views on planning and uh, facility distribution and so on. Thank you, Chairman. So much for our discussion today. I would like to thank the administration team and uh, for coming and also deputations for coming. I hope the administration can consider views expressed by the deputations and individuals just now. Thank you very much. EOB. No way, OB.
then I'll declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you.